we're going to age. There's no stopping that. But I want to age positively. I want to be happy. I want to still be active and doing things. And I think in our society, a lot of times we just take older people and sort of like, oh, go sit in your rocking chair. Everything's about anti-aging. Those are the messages we're all bombarded with, right? Anti-wrinkle, anti-this. I mean, there's something to be said for that, that, okay, like, you know, a lot of us want to look our best. And I'm not going to lie, I use anti-wrinkle cream too. But I think if everything's so anti-aging, anti-anti, I think that that sends a message to all of us to dislike the thought of aging and that our bodies are changing and things are changing. Welcome to Aging in Style, the podcast dedicated to celebrating aging and what it takes to do it well. I'm Lori Williams. I'm a certified senior advisor and senior housing expert. In each episode, you'll learn stories of older adults who are thriving in their 70s, 80s, 90s, and in some cases in their hundreds. Whether you're an older adult or the child of an older adult, this podcast is filled with insightful resources, organizations that are doing incredible work, and stories that will inspire you to volunteer, learn, and who knows, maybe even skydive in your golden years. Hi, welcome to another episode of Aging in Style. I'm so glad you're here because we're going to talk about aging. <laughs> what a surprise. But honestly, we are going to talk about about me and about my thoughts on aging because I just celebrated a really big birthday. I just turned 60. And I know some people think 60, you know, oh, I don't want to turn 60. I'm not looking forward to that, blah, blah, blah. I'm not that way. I am so excited about being 60. I don't honestly, I don't care if people know how old I am. It does not bug me at all because I think it's such a blessing to be able to be here and celebrating my 60th birthday. And I want to talk about my thoughts on aging, kind of go back through my past six decades of aging. And I remember clearly what I thought in each of those decades when I was turning those ages. And then I want to talk about the people that I have the honor of speaking with every day, which are seniors. And I know this is kind of gives me a unique perspective because most people don't have the daily opportunity to interact and speak with people in their 80s, 90s, and 100s. And I do. And so I ask them questions about how they feel about aging. I observe them and how they how they act. I want to share some of that with you as well. And also kind of like the five tips that I've taken away from talking to seniors and seniors who are aging well, who are positive about aging and a lot of aging is our mindset and it really truly is reflected in a lot of ways when we have a positive mindset about aging. But first, let's go back. We'll go back in time. <laughs> and I'm just going to do a quick recap of my last six decades and my thoughts on each decade. Now, when I turned 10, I honestly don't remember. I probably had a slumber party or something, but I can't give you any great thoughts that I may have had at 10 because I don't think I had them. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know what I was thinking at 10. But I do remember 20. I remember turning 20 and just thinking, I have arrived. I am an adult now. I just know it all. And that's so funny because when my kids turned 20, I certainly still saw them as kids. I did not go, oh, yes, they're such wise adults now. So, you know, my 20s, I enjoyed my 20s. Like most people my age, most of us got married in our 20s. And started families, started careers, all of that pretty much, you know, that's, that's kind of the standard for your 20s. You know, I love my 20s, wonderful time. I got married at 25. Everything didn't go like completely according to my plan in my 20s. So I'll take it on to turning 30. So when I turned 30, I was not happy. And it wasn't so much that I was 30. I don't think I thought it was that old, but I had had a master plan that when I was I was going to get married at 25, and that I would have three children by the time I was 30. So we, we all know how that saying goes, God laughs when you make plans. And so my husband and I did not have any children when, when I turned 30. We were struggling with infertility. We had a long struggle with that. And so when I turned 30, it was a bit depressing for me, to be honest, because I was not where I wanted to be in life. And so Thankfully, though, in my 30s, we did 
adopt our precious children. And so we adopted Chris when I was 32 and Abby when I was 39. So the 30s ended up being an awesome decade that I I loved being a mom and doing all the mom things and probably the happiest time of my life because I just had so much fun with my kids. And I tell them that all the time. Like I just had, Mark and I both, we just had a blast raising these kids. So when my 40s hit, I know a lot of people freak out at 40. 40, I loved because at 40, I had a baby. Abby was a year. She had just turned a year. Chris was eight. I was involved in everything school for him and doing all the baby things with Abby. And it was a great time. I, you know, I enjoyed all through my 40s as well because I was so involved with my kids. And and I think I think a lot of times people in their 40s, they're becoming empty nesters and grandparents. And, you know, I know a lot of my friends, their 40s. We are a little, you know, we're about 10 years behind everyone. <laughs> But uh, but that's okay, because it was a great time. I enjoyed my 40s a lot. When I turned 50, and I don't know if this is for most people, but for me, for 50, I I had a really hard time. And the main reason why is that my dad died at 50. I was 25, and he died of a heart attack at age 50. And the closer I got to 50, the younger 50 sounded. And it's kind of a weird thing for anyone who has lived longer than, you know, their mother or father to reach the age that they were when they died. It's kind of a surreal type of feeling. And then to go on past that and realize, wow, I'm now I'm a, a year, five years, 10 years past how long my dad lived. It's kind of a surreal, strange feeling is the only way I can explain it. So turning 50 was a, that was a hard one for me. And I, I'm not going to lie. It took me, I think, six months to say I was 50. I would be like, I'm f- uh, uh, couldn't say it. <laughs> so it's kind of ridiculous looking back now. But, but that was a tough one. And then into my 50s, I really didn't enjoy my 50s. There's some beautiful things that came from it. Started my business in my 50s. I know I have grown so much as a person in my 50s, but there has been so many challenges and and way too many challenges. And if you listen to the podcast and you know, Christmas 2022, my husband Mark had four strokes and our lives have completely, you know, our entire family, our lives have completely been turned upside down. And I am now the caregiver for my husband. He is pretty severely disabled and that is our life now. And so So the 50s, you know, I was 58 when that happened, the end of my 50s, quite honestly, I was just like, good riddance, (laughs) let's move on to the new decade, and let's just be 60. And so, so funny to me, because I'm sure at 20, the thought of 60, I just would have thought that is so old, and I just can't ever imagine being 60. But now, here I am, 60, and I'm going to say it doesn't feel old. I still feel 25, and I don't know if that's just a me kind of thing, but I feel the same on the inside as I've always felt. The outside is aging, obviously. I obviously feel wiser than I was at 25, thank God. But I think I think 60 is good, and I'm, I'm excited about this new decade. And maybe that's the way we should go into each new decade instead of dreading a decade. Maybe we go into it and with positiveness and joy and, hey, you know what? I made it to 60. Yay. (laughs) Let's go on to 70 and 80s. But that's kind of a quick recap of the decades for me. You know, and you should think about it for you. Kind of think about each decade that you've had so far and kind of what you felt within each decade. But I now want to talk a little more about aging in a positive manner. And like I've said before, I am so thankful that I have this unique perspective and that I work with older people all day. And I have had the honor of meeting some truly, you know, amazing seniors in their 80s, 90s and hundreds. And I I talk to them, I ask them, what's your secret? I watch them, you know, I just observe them and just see what I can take away. Because we're going to age. There's no stopping that. But I want to age positively. I want to be happy. I want to still be active and doing things. And and I think in our society, a lot of times we just take older people and sort of like, oh, 
go sit in your rocking chair or everything's about anti-aging. Those are the messages we're all bombarded with, right? Anti-wrinkle, anti-this, anti... I mean, there's something to be said for that, that, okay, like, you know, a lot of us want to look our best and I'm not going to lie, I use anti-wrinkle cream too. But I think if everything's so anti-aging, anti-anti, I think that that sends a message to all of us to dislike the thought of aging and that our bodies are changing and things are changing. So um, that's just kind of my thoughts on that. So let's let's dive a little deeper into the five tips that I've received from seniors on how to age in a positive manner. So before we go into that, though, I want to just kind of give an overall view of the main, I think the the number one thing in aging is to have the mindset, the positive mindset. I think it's so important to realize that no matter your age, you can still do amazing things. You can still reinvent yourself. You can do whatever you want. And and let me just kind of talk about a couple of different examples here. So one, there is a lady, Iris Apfel. You've probably seen her. You might not know her name. She recently passed away at the age of 102, but she became a model at age 97. She wears like the big glasses, um, real colorful outfits. She and her husband own like a textile business or something out of New York. And then when he passed, she just is all about, you know, you wear whatever makes you happy, wear bright colors, let people see you. Uh, Just a really, really positive, wonderful message. And she became a model at 97. Another one I want to mention, we had a spring fashion show here at our senior center in Flower Mound, where I live. And our models, we decided we wanted them all to be seniors. And the boutique that put on the show, I shop there all the time, and they sell to people of all ages. And, you know, one of the things we wanted everyone to see was, you don't have to dress a certain way just because you're 90. You can wear any of these outfits that, you know, any anyone of any age could wear. And so we had each of the models go to the boutique and pick out an outfit that they felt comfortable in. And one of our models, 101 years old, her name is Marilyn, beautiful lady. She used her walker, which was fine. And she was the cutest thing. I actually videoed her walking and she was, would stop and do a little model pose and a little wave. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I love it. The confidence and just, I mean, she was, she kind of stole the show. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so another one, and we've had on the podcast, Doug Brown. I talk about him all the time because I just think he's a fantastic human being and he's such an inspiration. He is 98 years old. He's a World War II and Korean War veteran. He reinvented himself in his 70s. He taught himself how to take old computers and reconfigure them, rebuild them, and he donates them to veterans who need computers and to boys and girls clubs where children that are, you know, in need of computers. And his major message that he puts out is to volunteer. Don't retire and sit on the couch and do nothing. Get out there, volunteer. There's people who need you. And I think that is what has kept him so young and vital. And I mean, I just saw him this weekend at a dance and he was, you know, he wasn't dancing, but he was participating and just being his usual fun self. And then another lady that we interviewed on the podcast is Catherine Etsy, and she is an author. I think she's in the Boston area, and she wrote a book. It's called, and this was episode 89, so we'll link it to this podcast so you can go back and listen. We'll also link Doug's interview because he's, he's amazing. He tells a wonderful story. But Catherine's book is, or what we talked about was A Practical Guide to Letting Go and Finding Unexpected Happiness. And that's actually the name of her book. It's called 80 Somethings and then A Practical Guide to Letting Go and Finding Unexpected Happiness. And she says that she has found that 80 year olds are happiest when they have purpose. And you know what? I think that could be said for any of us at any age, but we tend to think, you know, 
as a society, when someone's 80 or 90, that they don't have a purpose. Oh my gosh, yes, they do. And they still have so much to share with us still, no matter what your age is. So also wanted to mention there have been some studies done, and Catherine, I believe, brings these up in her book too. But there was a study done, and uh, the question was, who's happier, people in their 40s or their 80s? And surprisingly, it's people in their 80s are happiest. They call it the U-shaped happiness curve. And we'll have to repost it because I am in the upswing now, now that I'm 60. But you see, it swings up all the way 80, 90, and beyond. That happiness increases at middle age. And this is a pattern not just in the U.S., but it's around the globe. Now, I talk, like I said, I talk to seniors all the time. And I read a lot about aging and just observe things. And the five things that always come up, the five tips and things people tell me why they're doing so well, why they are still, you know, they're not just sitting on a couch doing nothing. So these are the top five reasons why. Okay, one, as we age, we need to stay physically active. We need to keep moving. That's huge. And I do notice this, in, and I'm just 60, and I thankfully, knock on wood, have not had any major you know, health issues. But if I sit down too long, I kind of feel it. So if I'm up and moving, I feel better. If I'm walking, if I'm doing things, I feel a lot better. And last night, it kind of struck me, I was cleaning out my refrigerator 10 o'clock at night because our trash picks up on uh, Monday morning. So... I pulled out a carton of eggs, just kind of move them out of the way. And I don't know what happened, but a whole bunch of them fell and crashed to the floor. And y'all, cleaning up raw egg all over your floor is not easy. <laughs> it was disgusting. So I'm trying to keep my dog in the big golden retriever. I'm trying to keep her away so I can get paper towels and clean it up. And of course, she's like all trying to get up in there. And so I was squatting down, just cleaning, cleaning. And I thought to myself, you know, I am so thankful that I can still squat down and I can do all these things. And I don't, I mean, I'm fine. It, it doesn't hurt me or anything because I know so many people who are younger than me who have, you know, knee and hip and back and different issues. And that would have been hard for them. And so I'm thankful that I am still physically able to do all the things I, I want to do. And, and granted, 60 is not old, but there are a lot of people who are old at 40, right? So the secret is, from all the seniors I talk to, is keep your body moving. Don't just sit down on the couch. You've got to keep moving and stay active, whether it's walking 30 minutes a day, dancing around your house, taking a class, doing Tai Chi. There's so many things that that you can do that are fun. Pickleball is now like the rage. I've not played it yet, but you know, there's so many people out doing pickleball now. So there's so many ways that you can keep moving and stay active. The second tip to positive aging and keeping a good mindset is self-fulfillment. So that could be volunteering, like our friend Doug, like he volunteers all over the place and he builds the laptops and everything. Finding a purpose, just like Catherine Etsy said, you have to have a purpose to keep going. What is your purpose? There's so many ways as a senior that you can volunteer and help. You could work up at the hospital or volunteer at the hospital. You can volunteer. There's groups called RSVP where you can do things. There's senior centers, there's churches, there's so many things you can do. And you know what? I mean, I know a lot of seniors who still work. Some because they really need the extra income, but many because they just enjoy it. And it may be on a part-time basis, but there's, I mean, I don't see myself retiring anytime soon. And I think the retirement age now is 67. I think that's what it is for people graduating into the 60s like me now. <laughs> I know there's another word. I guess it's aging, aging into, but I'm just gonna call it graduating. So I have graduated, but I, you know, I don't see myself never not working or doing something. I'm not one to sit home and sit in front of the TV um, all day long. I mean, there's, you know, I have my Netflix, you know, moments where, you know, I'll have a binge, but for the most part, I don't find any kind of fulfillment in that. I'd rather be doing something. 
And um, that is one of the factors in positive aging. Third one is social connection. This is huge. I mean, we found during the pandemic when we were all, you know, locked down in our homes, there was a lot of seniors who once that was lifted and we could all go back into the world again, they never did because they were so afraid of getting sick, of getting COVID. So, so many stayed home for a year or longer and they declined so much, both physically and mentally. And that just proves that there is a need for everyone to have some sort of a social connection. And that connection, again, can be through church. It can be through a senior center. And I know not every area has a vibrant senior center. I live in Texas and in the Dallas area, and we have amazing senior centers that just do so much. They have so many activities. It's it's incredible. But find something in your area, or even if it's just, you know, a neighbor or, or a friend from church that you go out and do things with, you need to have some sort of a social connection and not just be sitting at home. Fourth thing that we have seniors have told us that help with um, the positive aging learning a new skill. And a new skill could be painting. It could be gardening. It could be taking college courses. I don't know if it's everywhere, but there's a group that's called Ollie. And they do college courses for seniors, like through, like here in Texas, there's one through, um, or in Dallas, there's one through the um, University of North Texas. And it's called the Ollie Program. And they actually come to the senior center and do classes. And they can be, I mean, classes on anything like history, on um, on art, there, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of options to choose from. But I, I believe that Ollie program is national, but I'll check on that. It's so important to keep making those connections in your brain and that the learning new skills tie in with the fifth step or the fifth tip to positive aging, and that's keep your brain healthy. And again, that is learning something new, just stretching your brain. It could be maybe learning a foreign language, learning anything, reading reading a book, reading something in history, those things that keep your brain active. I mean, and making those connections and learning something new. And I always find it fascinating, like how many people become authors you know, write a book when they're older, like Catherine Etsy writing a book at 80, I think she was 87 when she wrote her book, or how many people have started painting and they're fabulous artists. They never thought to do it before. And, you know, for myself at 60, my very first book, I have always wanted to write. I always loved to write. Um, When I was in second grade, my teacher commented on something I'd written that I really should be a writer at in second grade. So I kind of always kept that in my mind. But I think throughout life, we're intimidated when we're younger and we think, oh gosh, we can't, do, I can't do that. But the beauty of getting older is that you don't really care <laughs> what people think. And it's very freeing because you're not worried that, oh, if I write this, people are going to think it's stupid or I share too much personally about myself and they're going to judge me. As you get older, you don't really care what people think. You do what is right for you. What you feel in your heart is the right thing. You are more authentic and true to who you are, which is a wonderful thing. Because I can say in my 30s, I probably cared way too much what other people thought of me. But as I've gotten older, I really don't care. I mean, I'm going to not do anything bad, (laughs) but I mean, I'm going to do things that are authentic, like I said, just authentic to me and be damned what anyone else thinks of it. If they judge it, they judge it. I don't care. That's a beauty of getting older. So those are the the five things, as I said, that I feel like from talking to seniors, those are the five things that are going to help you keep that positive mindset as you age. So physically active, self-fulfillment, social connection, learn new skills, and keep your brain healthy. And then the last one I want to add here is never stop having fun. And I feel like a lot of people just stop having fun. And you know what? I realize things happen. People we love, our our spouses get sick. 
I mean, I, I have a sick spouse right now, but I'm still finding joy in life and I'm still having fun. And I realize if an illness can also make things not as fun. I, I mean, I, I get that. I mean, I'm thankfully physically healthy right now. I hope if, you know, down the road, I don't know what life has in store for me, but if I become ill or whatever it may be, I hope that I will still be able to maintain a positive mindset about things and just be thankful for every moment of life that I am given and make the best of it while I'm here. So to the never stop having fun, though, I got a little serious there for a second, but I noticed something this weekend. We put on a sock hop. It's a senior prom and a sock hop for seniors to attend. And we had a blast. But there was one table and they were so funny. I looked over at them and my friend Doug, who's 98, I just talked about him. He was one of this group and they were taking their plastic tea and water bottles and they built a tower, like this tall tower. I mean, it's like something you would see middle schoolers doing. And it just struck me as so adorable and silly and fun. And they're building this tower and they're like, oh, oh, it's, you know, as they get taller and taller with it. And then they all come crashing down. And everyone's like, oh, and then they're just laughing and then they rebuild it. And I love it because they were having fun. Did I expect to see 90, you know, 80, 90 year olds um, building a tower like that? No, I did not, which is what makes it even just more wonderful and priceless just to have witness. I actually took a picture of it, so maybe I'll share it. But that's the thing with aging, you know, you don't need to be all serious and, you know, and grumpy and <laughs> you can still have fun. And what a joy it is to see people of all ages still having fun, laughing, doing funny things, silly things, and just having having the time of our lives, because that's what we're here for, right? We're here to grow and learn and have fun too. So that's what I have for you on aging, just kind of my thoughts, because that has been heavy on my mind, not heavy in a bad way, but just, you know, in my thoughts, turning 60 and just that whole new decade and what's what's to come. I personally want to age positively and remain active. So that's my goal. Okay, that's all I have for y'all this week. So go out there and have a positive attitude as we age and share this with your friends and family. And we will talk to you next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <music>